So, Carly, thank you for helping me out today. Yeah. Um, how old are you? I'm 12 and a month and like a half or something. Because you just had your birthday. Yeah. So did I. I'm not 12. I am <laughs> 46. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to be talking about poems today, and I wanted to get your idea first of all. What do you think is a poem? What is a poem? Um, like, it's like we worked on that at the beginning of the year oh. um, at school in French, and like we made our own poems and like we read some of the poems already made. For me, a poem is like something with rhymes, um, but like it's not a song, it's a poem. Like, I don't know how to explain mm. it, but like, that. I'm not a poem. See in Chaucer. In Chaucer? Did you draw in Chaucer? Uh, Et c'est quoi la particularité d'un poème en général? Qu'est-ce qui ça fait à la fin des mots? À la fin des mots, ça rime. Ah, ça rime. Donc un poème, c'est quoi? C'est comme une chanson, mais ça rime. Ça rime. Et on peut la dire, on peut la chanter si on veut. Oui. Ouais? D'accord. I find poetry a means of communication through verse or it doesn't have to be i prefer something that rhymes it can be something joyful or sad in childhood different emotions in play singing and sharing together do you remember at school uh, did you have to memorize poems when you were little Yes, I mean, some of the things, yes, because there's music to them as well. It's all to do with learning. I also think that it helps people who are shy and um, a bit worried. They can all um, communicate together and they don't have to feel shy about it. So I sort of was trying to think about this as well and I was thinking yeah because like a poem sometimes it rhymes but not all the time yeah um, and then I was thinking well what like you said what's the difference between a song and a poem because aren't they really just the same thing yeah it's basically the same thing but one has music that yeah. goes with it um, and then I thought is it written but then I've heard loads of poems that are only really spoken yeah so I looked at some um, definitions of poems online and I saw this one which is actually quite fancy but it says um, a poem is a piece of writing in which the expression of feelings and ideas is given intensity by particular attention to diction mm -hmm. that's like the, the, the sound and the, you know, the shape yeah. and things of words so sometimes involving rhyme but not always yeah. but rhythm and imagery yeah. so I thought that was quite good, Yeah. although it's quite complicated to understand. Mm. So then I found this one, What Makes a Poem a Poem. Do you want to read that one? In short, in short, what makes a poem a poem is the ability to make the reader feel something. A poem is different in, for, in form from pro prose. prose. Um, Normal rules of writing just don't apply. That doesn't mean a poem can't have form of punctuation, but it doesn't have to. Okay, have yeah, to. well done. So the word there, prose, is like yeah. the opposite of poetry. Prose is like a normal story, you know, and writing okay. and things. So they said first talk about prose and poetry being different. So they're saying, um, here it's talking about the feelings, so this mm. one also talked about feelings, expression of feelings, that was yeah. like the most important thing. Um, so it's like it makes you feel something, yeah. so I quite like that. Because mm. I was thinking for me, sometimes poems are quite mysterious. Yeah. yeah, like sometimes also like when you're doing, um, like when, for example, you're going on a treasure hunt, they give you, not poems, but like they give you um, like little clues, and sometimes clues can be in the form of poems. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and those ones tend to make you kind of like laugh yeah. sometimes. So I sort of thought, oh yeah, a poem can make you feel sad, or it can make you feel happy, or it can make you laugh. So it yeah. makes you feel something, so I quite like that bit. Um, and then I also quite like this, that the normal rules of writing don't apply. Yeah. Yeah, so that means that we don't have to pay that much attention to grammar and yeah. <laughs> other stuff. Um, so they could have that stuff in it, but it doesn't have to. Yeah. In haikus, because we also worked on that, 
um, like there are only like seven syllables in each phrase. Yeah. Uh, what did you do your haiku about? Did you actually write one? Uh, yeah, we wrote a few in school. Um, I think it was like we had to do one on each season, so like winter, summer, spring and autumn. I did a few haiku. Okay, and you did them in French? Yeah. Okay, very cool. So you said you've written a haiku, have you written any other poems? Oh. Um, sometimes in, um, like at the beginning of the year, we, we wrote like quite a few poems. So like I did write, we wrote a, a good ten at least poems. Oh, wow. so, yeah. mm -hmm. And how did you write them? Um, well basically the teacher gave us a theme. <laughs> the teacher gave us a theme, so like, um, like when it was like winter, or like um, a snowman or like snow and like some of them were also descriptions and like well then there were tons of other stuff okay so you had a bit of like guidance to get started yeah. okay have you ever written a poem yourself i did but i can't find it <laughs> <laughs> it was only a short one it was just about everyday life and that really why did you feel inspired to write this poem? It was at the time um, it helped me in what I was doing and things. Um, it might have been when I was um, leading the um, local bereavement societies um, group. Although it was a bereavement support group, it was a very happy group. I always say it was one of the happiest groups I know because we shared. When you were with this um, bereavement uh, support group, which was called the Silver Lining Club, um, did you share poetry in the group? Did you read poems at all or pass them round? Yes. Them? I might have done if it was, you know, it just depended on the situation, really. I remember one poem in particular that I wrote. Uh, I can't remember how old I was, but I was inspired by one of the plants that my mother was growing in a pot called an African violet. And I still remember the poem to this day. I might have been around 12, 13, I think, when I did this. So the African violet performed for you for the first time on camera. The African violet is in its prime, ready and just in time to go to the annual flower show. It's sure to win, but we all know that the really wonderful, great, fantastic African violet is made of plastic. The leaves are rubber and painted green. The flowers are the greatest ever seen, but it mustn't win. It must be made known that the African violet wasn't grown by any proper means or ways. <gasps> But look behind, the tents ablaze. Who caused the fire will never know, but it ruined the annual flower show. The end has come to the really fantastic African violet that was made of plastic. So I had fun writing that, I can still remember at the time, sitting cross-legged uh, on the floor, uh, working out all the different rhymes. Um, and that one has a very clear sense of rhythm and rhyme, which uh, we associate with poetry, but which is not at all essential. Other poems don't have that kind of structure, and very free-flowing, um, but um, just as powerful. A really good example of this is Mael's favourite poem. Although earlier he said a poem should rhyme, his favourite poem doesn't actually rhyme. It's a play on the sound of words, in particular the v, v sound in Valérie la vache, which means Valérie the cow, which is very difficult to translate. Um, but listen out for the v, v sounds that he likes so much in his favourite poem. Et alors toi, c'est quoi le poème que t'aimes bien? C'est Valérie la vache. Valérie la vache à la tomate. Avec sa caravane et sa valise, à vitesse grand V, avec Valérie la vache à la tomate. Vroom! Et qu'est-ce que t'aimes bien dans cette poésie? Moi, ce que t'aimes bien dans cette poésie, c'est à vitesse grand V. D'accord, c'est l'expression à vitesse grand V Ouais, c'est quand tu vas hyper vite. D'accord, très bien. À la vitesse grand V, parce que vitesse V. Ah, d'accord. Comme ça.
Mm -hmm. Et notre chef dit ça. Um, okay, so do you have a favorite poem? Um, I really like the poems from La Fable de la Fontaine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I really quite like those, but I don't really have a favorite poem, like one favorite one. Mm -hmm. Quite like all of them, basically. My favorite poem was The Donkey written by G.K. Chesterton from my teenage years and still today. I feel I can relate to the burdens we sometimes have to carry, such as the shopping and other things. I thought it was interesting that you said your favorite poem when you were a teenager was The Donkey, and it's yes. still your favorite poem now. Still so, the donkey. <laughs> yes, yeah, still the donkey. So you kept yes. the same favorite poem for a very, very long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, it's something I've always thought a lot of, and that I did learn, um, learn through school, through a lesson or something. But um, it's always been with me, always. Hi, my name's Olivia and I'm from Liverpool. I'm 19 years old and I study music in university. I've been part of the Act Together youth team since the beginning, really. And this year I decided I wanted to help with the art workshop and we decided that we were going to look at poetry and I chose to demonstrate a few poems which I'm going to show you and I think the main aim of all of this is to just show how you can use poetry to reflect on yourself and you know use it to connect with other people. The first one we decided to do was the collage poem the aim of this one was to basically just see what we could create by using different props like magazines um, and just being as creative as we possibly could. So how I started this first was I read the poem. I initially had the idea of writing it about the journey of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly and its transformation it goes through and how that relates to us as humans and how we grow. The caterpillar knows to stop soon. It will spin itself a silky cocoon. It will find peace within its protective casing, only to be released as something amazing. Just like caterpillars, people can be in our own bubble, like you or me. But what's not realised deep down, we are all just butterflies. And I thought it was really, really cute and really playful and, you know, child friendly and i feel like kids enjoy that poem i just made it as decorative as possible to make it really creative and you know what's really great about poems like this is once you've expressed your creativity in what you've put on your piece of paper it's great to either read the phrases or read the poem out and just look at what you've done and reflect on it and you know even if you do this in a group and other people you just can compare you know different ideas and what you did and why you did it and you know what it means to you. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is um, a deleted text poem mm -hmm. um, which is rather than us creating the words we're going to use words that are already yeah. there so you can use like old magazines and things make sure yeah. you get permission obviously when you're doing this at home children you can actually destroy them. Um, I don't have any magazines but I've got some very old newspapers here yeah. um, so we're going to choose a newspaper we're going to choose any page that you like uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I had a look earlier, I like this uh, planet page here. And when you've got a page, Brilliant. have a look through and just choose any words that you like to look of. They don't have to be connected or anything, yeah. just like any words that you like and then circle them. So <laughs> maybe like uh, 10 words on the page yeah. or more or less. Um, and then we're going to join them together to make a poem. Okay. okay. So I already started here. Okay, so how are you doing with your words? I think I found all of them. Okay. I found quite a few, like maybe 20 words. Oh wow, okay. Um, across the whole page, yeah? Yeah, basically. Okay. One here and one there. So now what we're going to do is just um, like look at those words mm -hmm. and start to think, is there any way that we could combine them 
yeah. to make quite a cool kind of uh, yeah. poem and it doesn't have to be that it has to be in order so you could like go from mm -hmm. here down to here and then back yeah. up and then if there's like a really crucial word that's missing yeah. like you need a verb or something in the middle yeah. then you can try and find one so we're just going to try and connect like a join the dots okay, okay? Let's see how we go. I'm just going to find one Oh, like that. <laughs> Never give up. Never gonna give up. <laughs> so, um, you need to start thinking about how you might put some of those words together. So yeah. you've got whiskey. Yeah. And you've also got Canadian. Yeah. So you could maybe have Canadian whiskey. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. And then here... I found cake um, down here somewhere. I s there we go, cake. Cake. Okay. Cake. cake. But you've also got things like, here you've got never give up. Yeah? <laughs> so how could you combine that? Never give up what? Never give never up. Go, never give up medium whiskey. Okay, yeah, do you see what I mean? Yeah. So you start putting it together in any way that you want. You can add in extra words, but yeah, just play with it. It's weird because like sometimes you just need like an and, but it takes yeah. you so much time to just find it. Yeah, there's an and if you want more. Oh yeah. So um you got, do you want to read yours out or do you want me to go first? Oh, you go first. Okay, mine's really weird. <laughs> okay, so it starts here. Um, a frozen ball swept over fuzzy humanity. Fantastic landscapes renewed, super smooth proportions, and more is in store. It melts the human bloodhound. <laughs> that is so weird. Spooky. <laughs> That's mine. What's yours? Um, mine is really weird um well it's not really weird like it's not definitely not compared to mine <laughs> it's never get up never give up canadian whiskey and cake it is um it is worth one um 125 million dollars and that's it for now that's good i like it i like it a lot okay so now what we're going to do is if we want we just decorate it so i've got all sorts of pens and like all sorts of stuff in my little box of goodies. And ooh, ooh. Yeah, I think we can use the paint right now. Yeah, we can use the paint. Um, the oil pastels, these are quite good. Oh, I love these. I'm just going to rub out the other words because if not, it's just going to mix. Okay. But what oh. we can do is because remember, there are no rules. Yeah. So we can do whatever we want. Like, um, maybe could we add words if we're while we're doing stuff we can see some? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so for example, mm -hmm. like to I want to draw attention to the words that I've chosen. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna take a thicker pen for some of them and like draw around so that they stand out and then I could even like delete, this is why it's called oh, deleted yeah. text, because I could delete everything around it. And you can create sort of pathways and things yeah. to the next word so that it makes it easier to read. Yeah. Yeah. So anything you want, you can cover like the whole page. Go crazy. The whole page? If you want. That's cool. Remember, no rules. No rules. It's looking nice. I like you've got these different kind of areas that you yeah. split it into. I'm just going to finish. Mm. So tell me, Carly, what was your inspiration for this work of art? <laughs> well, since that was frozen, mm. where well, I put here blue, then where I have literally no idea what to do, I put grey, and then just the colours. So, so I think it works really well. Uh, mine sort of like ended up uh, degenerating into just a bit of a scrubby mess. <laughs> but, um, it still kind of goes with the poem, which was also a bit of a scrubby mess. But like you said, no rules. Yeah. Okay, so while you're finishing up that, do some more explanations into the camera. So we used old newspapers, so it works quite nicely with magazines as well. Um, and yeah. another way that you can do it is to, instead of taking the words and deleting the rest of the text, you can actually cut out the words and then stick them onto a new piece of paper and then decorate that as well. So um, that's more like a collage poem. And um, uh, Olivia, she showed us uh, the poem that she did about butterflies. Uh, which she made into a collage, but if you're maybe not feeling so confident about writing a poem from scratch um, This is a way that you can uh, uh, Get started with that by cutting out some existing words and then playing around with them So good stuff I think that's all the words okay. um, oh, 
Barnaby. Oh, Barnaby's back from his walk. Hello, Barnaby. Can you go away? Oh, uh, you're please? stalking. Ta-da. The frozen's holding the never, the never um, give it, never give up. Never give up Canadian whiskey and cake. <laughs> Is that, are you going to give it a title, actually? What are you calling it? Um, whiskey and cake. Whiskey and cake. Okay, I'm going to call mine... Uh, the Human Bloodhound. I don't remember the first time I heard a poem, apart from growing up with nursery rhymes. There's basically very little difference between a poem and a nursery rhyme. A nursery rhyme is basically just a traditional song or poem for children, especially young children. Um, do you remember reading poems to us when we were children? Yes, I certainly would have done. Um, yes. Mm. I remember Ozzy reading to me The Quangle Wangle's Hat by Edward Lear. It's what we would call a nonsense poem. It was like a story um, which rhymes. And I loved it. It was about all of these fabulous creatures that came to live in the Quangle Wangle's hat. Um, like the uh, the pobble who has no toes and the dong with the luminous nose. I just loved the sounds and the uh, these crazy made-up animals, so I really enjoyed that and um, used to draw pictures and, and things of it. This is Faustine, aged four, who has reinterpreted and drawn her version of the rhyming story in French called The Frog with the Big Mouth. Je vais te raconter l'histoire de la grenouille à grande bouche. Il était une fois une grenouille qui n'en avait marre de manger que des mouches. Donc elle était et, et puis après elle parta voir le, le, monsieur le singe. Toi, tu manges quoi Moi, je mange des bananes. Bah Elle continue, elle continue sa route et elle dit ça. Tu manges quoi, toi Moi, Moi, le taureau, je mange du foin. Bah Elle dit à toi, tu te manges quoi, toi Moi, je mange des petites souris. Bah Elle continue à sa route et elle dit ça. Toi, tu manges quoi Moi, je mange des grenouilles à grande bouche. Ah ah uh, so, um, one last poem, mm -hmm. which is uh, an experiment. So it may not work. Let's try it. A uh, piece of paper for you. A piece of paper for me. We're going to do a jigsaw poem, which is that we're both going to write like a, lines of a poem yeah. from our perspective. So you write it from the perspective of Carly, who's like a 12 year old. Yeah. And I write it from my perspective as a not 12 year old, as we established earlier. Um, and then we're going to try and then cut it up and see if we can like mix them together to make a new poem. So we just do. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of do an instruction each line by line, okay? Um, so for the first line, yeah. let's do I like something, okay? Uh, next line down, I want to... <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what, let's make it more interesting. You're not allowed to look at the other persons, okay? So we're going to like put a barrier. Okay. Okay? You're okay. looking at mine. I know, I already got... I'm going to steal your idea. No, I'm not really. Okay. I mean, um, either way, if we put the same thing, or like it won't make it as interesting. Mm -hmm. In ten years, I will... Mine? Or do you want to suggest one? Um... Mm, I don't know any idea. Okay. Uh, so let's go backwards in time then. Um, five years ago... Okay. I don't know if that's how you write it, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then let's try... The best thing about being me is... 
Okay. I don't have any ideas. What do you... Well, you said that your favourite things were... I forgot the order. Art, music, sport. Music, sport, music, art. Music, That's music art, sport. They're all first, so... Okay. So, yeah, maybe something about that. The thing about me and me is... Um, I can't wait to... The good thing about being tall... Okay. Okay, one more to finish off. What should we have? Let's try and put ourselves in the other person's perspective. I hope one day you can... Uh, <laughs> that's hard. Okay, so now take a pair of scissors and then cut each line so we end up with strips, yeah? Oh, actually, um, maybe let's, before doing that, maybe number them. Uh, yeah. Case. Okay, so what was your number one? Um, I like cats. I like jazz. Okay, so let's put them together. Okay. I like jazzy cats. <laughs> actually, I like yours first. I like cats. I like jazz. I quite like cat, the ah sound. I like cats. I like jazz. I I'll stick yours on, you stick mine on. Okie dokie. And uh, number two? Um, I want to sleep. <laughs> I've got, I want to change the world. So, let's... Um, Put yours first. <laughs> oh, how about, I want to change the world, but I want I to sleep. sleep. Let's maybe put that one there and then the other one there. Okay. Do we add but there, or do we just leave it? Maybe let's just leave it. Maybe we don't need the butt. I want to change the world. I want to sleep. In ten years, I will be an adult. Mm -hmm. In ten years, I will knit a blanket of many colours. <laughs> We're very messy. We are very messy. Um, five years ago, I was in primary. Five years ago, I was building a house. I'm still building a house, but... Put yours first. <laughs> the film. Blue vs humans. She will win. <laughs> glue. Probably. Because <laughs> they can mm -hmm. literally just glue all the humans together and they win. Mm -hmm. The best thing about being me is I like sport. Okay. And what about you? Best thing about being me is that I can laugh. Everyone can laugh. <laughs> well, no, lots of people don't laugh. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Maybe I should say I can laugh even when things are difficult. Yeah. Does that make it better? No, but you know, it's fine. Mm. Okay. So what does it say? Um, I can't wait to see my friends. I can't wait to drive my old car, which is uh, in a different country and can't get it because of the virus at the moment. Oh wait, Dad told me that you were getting like um, like an ecological... Well, like it's, it's a really an old car. 1963 yeah. Morris Minor Convertible. Oh yeah, that's amazing. The good thing about big uh, about being tall is you can reach a lot of things that are high up. Uh, I had almost the same. The good thing about being tall is reaching things on shelves. <laughs> the same thing. Okay, so we can combine them then. So. I hope one day you can do music, sport and art all day. Um, I hope one day you can do some gardening. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying we haven't cut our grass recently? <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, I didn't know what to put, so I just put that. <laughs> I should have put, I hope one day you get some peace from Barnaby. <laughs> that would have been way better. Mm, crazy dog, yeah. I've actually thought of another one that I want us to write as well. So, okay, so the last one, I've still got a piece of the yep. Okay, so the last one is, my advice to you is... Next time don't get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Um, I'm looking at you for inspiration. What advice would I give? There. <laughs> what have you got? You're laughing. You can see it. <laughs> Okay, so my advice to you is stay creative. What's yours? Get some new factors. 
<laughs> all my thoughts at the moment. That goes quite well with the creative. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's have a look at the poem all together then. Right, should we read it out? If I read out yours and you read out mine, yeah? Okay. I like cats. I like jazz. I want to change the world. I want to sleep. <laughs> In ten years, I will be an adult. In ten years, I will knit a blanket of many colours. Um, in five, five years ago, I was building a house. Five years ago, I was in primary. The best thing about being me is that I can laugh. The best thing about being me is I like sport. I don't. <laughs> um, I can't wait to drink my... Uh, to, <laughs> to drive my old car. <laughs> I can't wait to see my friends. The good thing about being tall is you can reach a lot of things that are high up. The good thing about being tall is you can... You can... Is reaching things on shelves. Um, I hope one day you can do music, sport and art all day. I hope one day you can do some gardening. My advice to you is stay creative. My advice to you is get some new felt tips. <laughs> Carly and I actually ran out of time, but another thing you can do with your jigsaw poem is to cut it up again, and this time you don't have to keep all of the phrases together. You can cut out individual words and really play around with them together to come up with uh, a different type of poem. Um, so this is what I did with our poem. I like cats, I like jazz. The good thing about building a house, the best thing about being tall, the good thing about being me, the best thing of many is gardening. I like reaching things on shelves, reach a lot of things high up. I can't wait to change the world. I will, I can, I want to, you can. One day you can drive my car. I hope I will laugh. Knit some new friends, do some sport in 10 years, five years, 10 years ago. Colors that are felt tips, stay creative. Five years ago, I was tall. I can't wait to be an adult, see my music in sport and art. I hope one day you can do all day. I want to get in a blanket. Is, is, is that being old? I was about being me. My advice to you is primary. My advice to you is sleep. So that was actually the same words that Carly and I wrote together, um, but cut up even further. I set myself the challenge to try and use every single word, which I did in the end, uh, but if that's too difficult, then you can just um, throw some away and select them, but it's a lot of fun. You might actually have seen uh, magnetic poetry. These are um, a collection of words on magnets that uh, you can play around with uh, on your fridge. So it's uh, slightly the, the similar concept uh, that I was doing here. So I hope you enjoy doing a jigsaw poem. Uh, do play around with it, be creative, be inventive, and uh, really uh, have some fun working together between different generations. Nature is a really good topic to write poems about. As we heard from Carly earlier, she had written some haiku poems about uh, the four seasons. So here, let's listen to Camille and Faustine reciting some poems about nature and the seasons as well. Voici mon petit jardin. J'y ai semé des graines. Je le recouvre de terre. Voici la bonne et douce pluie. Soleil brille dans le ciel. Voici une et deux et trois et quatre et cinq. Cinq petites fleurs. Voici l'automne. Vol. Vol, vol, petite fête. Saute, saute les cueilles. Cachez-vous les hérissons ou êtes-vous Les champignons. Les grands arbres. Voilà, Ils prennent toutes leurs couleurs. Pomme. Pomme, pomme. Tombe les pommes. Pomme, pomme, pomme. Voici l'automne. So the second poem that I chose to do was one of my favourites. 
by far um, because I'm a music student so I really enjoy you know listening to music and writing music and creating lyrics that are really meaningful to me it's a universal language so I feel like it's a really great way to show how to connect with other people so what we decided to do for this one is all you really need to do is pick your favourite song whether that be your own or a song that you've heard or it doesn't have to be a song, it can be a poem and you pick out your favourite lyrics or favourite line and you create a picture from you know your own creativity and what you imagine when you listen to those lyrics and then put that down on a piece of paper, draw it anyway you know you can cut anything out, you can draw it, paint whatever you feel fit to do best and then write the lyrics in you know calligraphy, bold writing, normal text, whatever you could even cut letters out and put them together so this one is my favourite so on this one we drew a lake on the river with a moon in the background and we have two beautiful people on a canoe which is really sweet and really nice and I just think the picture overall is amazing and the song I chose was Moon River um, sang by Audrey Hepburn and the lyrics were two drifters off to see the world there's such a lot of world to see we're after the same rainbow's end waiting round the bend my heckleberry friend Moon River and me and I chose this song because it's one of my favourites. I've always loved this song from when I was little. Um, and I actually did this with my partner, so we both got to do it together. And I just think it was really nice and really nice for us to reflect together. And it's a great way to bond. And I mean, I feel like this is a great acti activity to do with your yeah, elders, families, friends in groups. And, you know, it's a great way to connect and there's a lot of meaning behind lyrics and music and if you write them down and you be creative with it once you read it out to yourself or read it aloud or even in the mirror it just allows you to reflect on yourself and be involved and connect with others so that was the second part when you were little did you have any books with poetry in did you have yes any Yes, I did have some books with poetry in, um, and um, you know the rhymes and things, some of those, and that you would sometimes get them for birthday presents or something. When I was in primary school, I got this book, and it's called I Like This Poem, and I love it. It was done for 1979, the International Year of the Child, and it's actually a compilation of poems chosen by children themselves in different age groups. So, for example, there's a whole section for eight-year-olds, and under each poem, one of the people who, one of the children who voted for it explains why I like this poem. Um, so, for example, this one, Claire says, I like it because it's about a snail. And it uh, describes that it goes very slowly, but it makes no noise. That was why she liked that one. What I like about this collection is even though these poems were chosen by children for other children of the same age group, uh, they're not just simple children's poems. A lot of them are actually quite complicated as well. There's a real mixture in there. I used to love reading these poems. Some of them I would memorise. I remember even reading them aloud sometimes uh, in front of uh, the class at school. And uh, some of them I can still remember now. Even though at the time I may not have understood all the words, I still memorise them and love the sound of the words. So I don't think it's necessary that you have to understand absolutely everything that's in a poem. And some poems can actually be quite difficult. But um, that's why they have a certain mystery and I actually quite like that. In secondary school um, we had a different book. This was the, called the Windmill Book of Poetry. And here the poems were grouped around particular themes. Um, and uh, there was a bit of an introduction to each group of poems, posing some questions to think about. So I remember these very clearly as well. So this is a template, you can get one each. And basically, we have to fill out the blanks. Yeah. Um, but the idea is, you write it yeah. like this, and it sounds quite negative. 
but you can also then at the end you read it backwards right here's a reverse or upside down poem that i did as part of a group of mixed adults and children a couple of years ago so it's in french but i'm going to show you how it works because it's actually on the theme of uh, act together you mustn't listen to children you're wrong if you think that children are worth something i know that children don't have ideas it's not true that children are intelligent. Children can't help adults. Don't think that children can change the world. Listening to us, loving us, encouraging us will get nowhere. Um, it is pointless. Hitting us, ignoring us, that's the most important. Listen to us. And then at the end, unless you change and reverse your way of thinking and then listen to us that's the most important ignoring us hitting us is useless and will get us nowhere by encouraging us by loving us by listening to us children can change the world don't think that children can't help adults children are intelligent it's not true that children don't have ideas. I know that children are worth something. You are wrong if you think that we mustn't listen to children. So this is actually uh, a really effective uh, reverse poem on the, the theme of uh, adults and children working better together. So when you read it the first time, it's quite shocking, but then by turning it upside down, that's the twist in the tale. So it's actually quite tricky. Yeah. I've ended up changing quite a lot of mine when I was reading it backwards. So, like, now I've just got this top half to do. Okay. And I found I couldn't make it work with like there's two lines here and mm. I really struggled to make it work so I've actually crossed those out and then it works. I wonder if there was actually a problem with that template. Unless you make it work in which case you're the fake yeah. genius. But <laughs> <laughs> What's yours about? Um, well, this is just weird, like, I, mm. it doesn't make any sense, but then here it's about the virus. Oh, okay. It's the only thing I could find that works, so. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. It doesn't matter if, um, it's weird, because the rules don't apply, remember? Yeah. Where was it? In here somewhere. It's official. Normal rules don't apply. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so mine changed a lot, so I started yeah. writing it about one thing, and then, I don't know, it just turned out to be about climate change, so you did virus, I did climate change. Yeah. Carly and I struggled quite a bit with our reverse poem um, using a template that we found from the internet and we had to play around with it quite a lot to make it work. So uh, this was mine. I am a useless person and I refuse to believe that I am making a difference. In 30 years I will tell my children that I have my priorities straight because profit is more important than love. I tell you this. Once upon a time, people respected nature, but this will not be true in my era. The world is coming to an end. Experts tell me humans are destroying the planet. I do not conclude that children and adults can work together. In the future, the animals will become extinct. No longer can it be said that we respect each other's human rights. It will be evident that people will continue to be hateful. It is foolish to presume that we can put aside selfish thoughts and actions. And all of this will come true unless we reverse it. We can put aside selfish thoughts and actions. It is foolish to presume that people will continue to be hateful. It will be evident that we respect each other's human rights. No longer can it be said that the animals will become extinct. In the future, children and adults can work together. I do not conclude that humans are destroying the planet. Experts tell me the world is coming to an end, but this will not be true in my era. People respected nature once upon a time. I tell you this, love is more important than profit. I have my priorities straight, because in 30 years I will tell my children that I am making a difference and I refuse to believe that I am a useless person. 
I did my reverse poem about climate change and Carly did hers about the coronavirus. So this is the, the part of her poem that uh, looks at this. Once upon a time, a virus was cured, but this will not be true in my era. It's not okay. Experts tell me that this virus is difficult to get rid of. I do not conclude that we will get through this. In the future, there will not be a vaccination. No longer can it be said that this is under control. It will be evident that a lot of people will get it. It is foolish to presume that there is no risk. And all of this will come true unless we reverse it. And then she has a vision of uh, the world in the future without the virus. There is no risk. It is foolish to presume that a lot of people will get it. It will be evident that this is under control. No longer can it be said that there will not be a vaccination. In the future, we will get through this. I do not conclude that this virus is difficult to get rid of. Experts tell me it's not okay, but this will not be true in my era. A virus was cured once upon a time. Okay, so interesting experiment, but quite hard. Yeah. Um, there's some other templates online, um, so yeah, maybe there's some easier ones that we can look at. Yeah. So how did you find it? It was quite hard and it twice. It took t quite some time. Mm -hmm. I think it's also because we're basically writing like two poems. We do yeah. one that way and then one the other, and then have to make sure that it works both yeah. ways. Like it doesn't completely. Mine doesn't completely work, but. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we had more time as well, we yeah. could. Um, so it does say in the instructions that you need to kind of keep editing it and working on it to make it work. Okay. Also, when I was younger, um, the poems of the First World War made a big impact on me. Uh, I learned about this in uh, history and we also looked at the, the poems uh, in, uh, in literature. And they were so poignant, they were so sad, so powerful. Uh, and the meaning of such intense emotion in, in so few words really, really stuck with me. Um, and uh, this was a book I found later. Most of these books were bought uh, second hand, uh, but this uh, is also um, a book that's very dear to me. But of course, poems don't have to be serious. Um, we do love uh, some silly verse, some funny poems. And uh, one of my favorites uh, is uh, John Hegley. Um, there was a young creature from space who entered a three-legged race. He was not very fast. In fact, he came last because he was a bag of oven-ready chips. Um, it's a particular sense of humour there. Um, but uh, poems for, for all moods. This is why I love poetry so much. Here is Isae, aged nine, reading in French a poem called The Time of the Crime by Maurice Carême. L'heure du crime, minuit, voici l'heure du crime. Sortant d'une chambre voisine, un homme surgit dans le noir. Haute ses souliers, s'approche de l'armoire sur la pointe des pieds et saisit un couteau dont l'acier lui bien aiguisé, puis masquant ses yeux de fouine avec un pan de son manteau, il pénètre dans la cuisine et d'un coup seul coup, comme un bourreau, avant que ne crie la victime, ouvre le cœur d'un artichaut. I also love it when you can see poems in public. I used to live in London and on the uh, underground, in the carriages, they used to have uh, poems published. Hence uh, this collection here, Poems on the Underground. Uh, on the way to work, uh, before the, uh, the age really of uh, mobile phones, when everybody had their head down, you would look up at all of the advertisements and then there would be a surprise, wonderful poem um, that would uh, make you think very often for the rest of the day, if not longer. Uh, so really thought provoking. So um, I, I love this idea of um, sharing poetry, uh, making poetry, uh, speaking poetry. So we've talked a lot about uh, writing and reading poetry, um, but a lot of poetry is meant to be spoken aloud and heard and experienced. Performance poetry is designed to have that impact in person. And that's a really good thing. That would be a lot of fun to do um, with, uh, with mixed generations as well. This workshop has been in English, but obviously you will experience and write and read and hear poems in your own language. Was it, do you remember, was it like different if you were writing in French or English? Was one yeah, more like, easy or harder? For me, French is easier because okay. like, I've been here longer and like, I've, you know, I'm basically better in French than I am in mm. English. 
But um, like for me, I prefer in French writing the poems. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. I think I've never written any poems in French. I think the language is quite different, though, isn't it? It's yeah. Like English is a lot more has a lot more rhythm, I think, and yeah. French sort of flows and it's more yeah. sing-songy. Okay. And it can be very difficult to translate poems and to really get a sense of what the poet was trying to express because they've taken a lot of time selecting the words and sounds, which change very, very much when translated. Um, so, for example, uh, take a language like Chinese, which is very, very different um, to European languages in the way that it's constructed. So, the people that translate poems are very often poets themselves to really try and help convey some of that uh, special choice of words, sounds and rhythm. Uh, from one language to another. Really difficult job. A lot of respect for people who, who translate poetry. And it's really nice to um, experience poetry from different languages, even in translation, because it can bring a completely different perspective um, and help us to really see things from a different angle and to imagine the world from a different perspective than our own. So I do encourage you to, to find poems in other languages um, to find translations of poems from other languages. If you speak, understand other languages, then do try and look at some poetry. Um, uh, even if you struggle at first, it can be really, really worth it to, uh, to get a completely different sense of, of language and, and expression of feeling, which is what we said poetry is all about. I think it's really um, communicating whatever class you are or whatever you know group or nationality you are it's um it's just something that children like to do and they learn by it there's a lot of poetry available freely online if you have access to the internet poetryfoundation.org is a really great source lots of material divided by theme and do seek out um, poets who are women, who are from different cultures, who have different experiences from yourself. We can sometimes have a tendency just to think about the, the, the famous poets that we feel that we should learn about. Like for example, Yeats is a classic here. You can tell just the, the look of the, the book. It's, um, it's beautiful, but it's also so traditional. It comes from a, a kind of a, a male um, European perspective. So do seek out poets with perspectives different from what you might have just learned about in school. Seek out poets who are women, who are children, who are people of color, who have different experiences to really help us to understand the wealth of uh, learning and appreciation that we can get from human being to human being through the wonderful medium of poetry. Okay, thank you very much Carly for this poetry experience. Any reflections, anything you want to share on how it was? Um, it was good, it was mm -hmm. fun and well I learned some new ways to do poetry mm -hmm. Okay. and well yeah it yeah. was fun. No, it was good. I mean, I did these for the first time. I haven't done these before, so it was a good experience for me too. I enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah, it was good, apart from the fact that the dog kept jumping into the picture every five minutes. Yep. You know, the beginning. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. So we hope you've enjoyed this workshop. Thank you for joining us. We hope you feel inspired to try some of the activities. If you do create some poems about the theme of uh, acting together between different generations, share them on social media with the hashtag WeActTogether. Thank you. I, I just feel that, you know, it's a, a very worthwhile cause. And um, yes, it's a, a little bit I, I can do to help, perhaps. Just like to thank everyone for joining this workshop. I hope you enjoyed the poems that I did and many of the other poems and I really hope that you use this to connect with other people of all ages, of all cultures and work together and even use it for yourself. I'm grateful to have been part of this workshop and I'm excited to see what the future holds for future projects.